now again applying this limit form in the given bracket we have sin inverse of 0 minus putting c1 is equal to minus a we have sin inverse of a by a sorry minus a by a plus sin inverse of a by a minus sin inverse of 0 now sin inverse of 0 is 0 sin inverse of minus a by a that is sin inverse of minus 1 but sin inverse of minus 1 is minus pi by 2 so finally it is minus minus plus pi by 2 plus sin inverse of a by a is sin inverse of 1 and sin inverse of 1 is pi by 2 so this is pi by 2 minus sin inverse of 0 is 0 so final answer is pi which is a finite unique number thus given integral is convergent next here now we will discuss uh, third kind of improper integral and example of third kind of improper integral here question given to us is discuss the convergence of integration from 0 to infinite 1 upon x square dx let us solve this example table to please here question is integration from 0 to infinite 1 upon x square dx we have to solve this here observe that this is the first kind of improper integral because first limit of integration is infinite that is why it is a first kind and function is discontinuous at this point 0 so it is of second kind and we know that any integral which is of both first and second kind then it is known as third kind so this is the third kind of improper integral so first we split this integral 0 to infinite into two parts so we have integration from 0 to infinite 1 upon x square dx is equal to integration from 0 to a 1 upon x square dx plus integration from a to infinite 1 upon x square dx now we see that here first integral is of second kind improper integral because function is discontinuous at 0 and this integral is of first kind improper integral because limit of integration is infinite so we will solve this our earlier concept here 0 is the point of discontinuity so we will replace 0 by some number and writing in the limit form we have limit c1 tends to 0 integration from c1 to a 1 upon x square dx plus here also replacing number infinity by some number c2 and letting uh, limit concept we have limit c2 tends to infinite integration from a to c2 1 upon x square dx now integration of 1 upon x square is minus 1 upon x so we have limit c1 tends to 0 integration of 1 upon x square is minus 1 upon x upper limit is a lower limit is c1 plus limit c2 tends to infinite integration of 1 upon x square is again minus 1 upon x lower limit is a upper limit is c2 so this is equal to now putting upper limit and lower limit we have limit c1 tends to 0 minus 1 by a plus 1 by c1 plus limit 
c2 tends to infinite minus 1 upon c2 plus 1 upon a. Now, putting limit in the brackets, we have minus 1 upon a plus 1 upon 0 plus here minus 1 upon c2 sorry infinite plus 1 upon a here plus 1 upon a minus 1 upon a cancel minus 1 upon infinity is 0 and 1 upon 0 is infinite so final answer of this integration is infinite it is not a finite unique number that's why given integral is divergent thus integral is divergent so this was the uh, discussion about first kind second kind and third uh, kind of improper integral and its convergence now next topic is absolute convergence here stated the definition of absolute convergence the improper integral integration from a to b f of x dx is said to be absolutely convergent if integration a to b mode of f of x dx is convergent that means any integral is said to be absolute convergent if its modulus is convergent now we see some of the examples of this type of convergence here first example is discuss the convergence of integration from 1 to infinite cos 3x upon x to the power 3 by 2 now we will solve this example here example is integration from 1 to infinite cos 3x upon x to the power 3 by 2 dx now we will solve this here observe carefully that the function cos 3x is taking negative and positive values inside the interval 1 to infinite because we know that uh, cos 3 pi is equal to minus 1 cos 6 pi is equal to plus 1 cos 9 pi is equal to minus 1 cos 12 pi is equal to plus 1 and it takes 0 and any other value also inside this interval thus function changing its sign inside the interval so many times so in this case we should use this uh, uh, absolute convergence test so we will take the modulus of the given function and solve the example so we consider absolute value of integral that is integration from 1 to infinite mod of cos 3x upon x to the power 3 by 2 dx we have to solve this example now we know that absolute value of cos 3x can never exceed the number 1 because absolute value of cos 3x is always less than or equal to 1. So, we can write this integral as integration from 1 to infinite 1 upon x to the power 3 by 2 dx because cos 3x always less than or equal to 1. So, this given integral is less than or equal to this integral. Thus, we have now two integrals first and second. Now, we want to apply the direct comparison test, but before that we should know a convergence of any one integral or divergent of any one integral. Now, we determine whether the integral is convergent or divergent. Now, integration from 1 to infinite 1 upon x to the power 3 by 2 dx. We know that this is the p integral in the form of integration from a to infinite 1 upon x to the power p dx. Okay. We know that this integral is convergent if p greater than 1. So, here it is a p integral with p is equal to 
3 by 2 which is greater than 1. Thus, given integral is conversion. Thus, integration from 1 to infinite 1 upon x to the power 3 by 2 dx is convergent. So, we have verified that this integral integration from 1 of 1 to infinite 1 upon x to the power 3 by 2 is convergent and this integral is bigger than this modulus. Now, we can apply the direct comparison test that we have seen in our first lecture. If f of x is less than or equal to 0 of x, 0 less than or equal to f of x less than or equal to 0 of x and if 0 of x is convergent then f of x must be convergent. So, we have shown here that this integral is convergent. So, this integral must be convergent. Thus, by direct comparison test, integration 1 to infinite mod cos 3 x upon x to the power 3 by 2 dx is convergent. So, given integral is convergent and if modulus is convergent, so given integral is also convergent. So, finally, the given integral integration from 1 to infinite cos 3 x upon x to the power 3 by 2 is convergent. Next, we consider the second example. Slide please. Here, example is discuss the convergence of integration from 1 to infinite sin x upon x square plus 1 dx. Now, we will solve this example using the same concept. Here, integration is from 1 to infinite sin x upon x square plus 1 dx. Now, we will solve this example. Here, we can verify that sin x is taking so many positive and negative values inside the interval 1 to infinity. Sin x assumes many positive and negative in this interval 1 to infinite. So, it is advisable to use the uh, absolute convergent test whenever the function is changing its sign so many times. So, here we will take absolute integral in place of the simple integral. Now, integration of 1 to infinite mod sin x upon x square plus 1 dx which is less than or equal to integration 1 to infinite 1 upon x square plus 1 dx. Why? Because we know that sin x has codomain minus 1 to 1. So, modulus of sin x is always less than or equal to 1. So, we can write sin x upon x square plus 1 mod is less than or equal to this integral. So, by the same discussion, uh, we want to apply the direct comparison test here. And for that, we will test the convergence of the second integral integration from 1 to infinite 1 upon x square plus 1 dx. Now, integration from 1 to infinite 1 upon x square plus 1 dx. Now, we have to uh, test the convergence of this integral. Here, this integral is of first kind improper integral because limit of the integration is infinite. So, uh, replacing this number infinite by some finite number, let us say c and writing it into limit form, we have limit c tends to infinite integration from 1 to c 1 upon x square plus 1 dx. Table to piece, which is same as limit c tends to infinite. We know that integration of 1 upon x square plus 1 is 10 inverse x. So, this is 10 inverse x from 1 to c. Now, we put upper limit and lower limit. So, this is equal to limit c tends to infinite 10 inverse of c minus 10 inverse of 1. 
which is same as now we apply c tends to infinity inside the bracket so we have tan inverse of infinite minus tan inverse of 1 we know that tan inverse of infinite is pi by 2 and tan inverse of 1 is pi by 4 so final it is pi by 4 which is a finite unique value hence given integral is convergent so if modulus is convergent then given integral is also convergent so this was the discussion regarding the improper integral and its convergent now we will discuss about one more topic that is from the um, partial differentiation and the topic name is linearization let us discuss about this topic linearization let us see what is linearization here the definition is given let f of x comma y be any differentiable function that is any two variable function then linearization of this function f of x comma y at a point x0 comma y0 is given by this formula l of x comma y is equal to f of x0 comma y0 plus fx at x0 comma y0 into x minus x0 plus fy at x0 comma y0 into y minus y0 here fx and fy denotes the partial differentiation of f with respect to x and y respectively that we have already seen in the Taylor series here note that f of x y is similar to l of x comma y at x 0 comma y 0 that means f of x y is given function and l of x y is linearization that means both these things function and linearization are almost same at the point x 0 comma y 0 geometrically linearization is the tangent plane to the given any two variable function f of x comma y at a uh, given specified